Fetal alcohol spectrum disorder is not a diagnosis. It is an umbrella term that they use that has different alcohol exposure diagnoses under it. Um, and those disorders include both physical features, uh, behavioral problems, mental disorders that fall under these categories. It's not a diagnosis, and, and that's one of the things that um, people often do is they say, well, this individual has fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. Well, they have one of the diagnoses under that category. And fetal alcohol, alcohol use during pregnancy and the causes of the disorders is not new to us. Actually, there are books all the way back to the 1800s where doctors and physicians are talking about women that drink alcohol during their pregnancy, give birth to children that are um, retarded, they use different terminology in them. Um, so they've known for a long time, but it actually was these gentlemen, uh, Dr. Smith and Jones in 1973 that actually really pu started publishing research and articles about the effects uh, on children of alcohol exposure during pregnancy. And even then, and doctors have known that this was an issue for a long time, we know today, and there's a recent study that said that 80% of obstetricians still today are telling women it's okay to drink some alcohol during pregnancy. And, and we know that any alcohol use during pregnancy is not okay, none whatsoever. How many of you remember being told by your doctor that a glass of wine is fine, it'll settle you down, especially if you're having stress? Okay. So, so there's a big push on now, and there's several uh, physicians at the UT Health Science Center that are really addressing this within the curriculum there for obstetricians, gynecologists, and uh, pediatric doctors to really get this into the curriculum, that no alcohol use during pregnancy is okay. Actually, in the International Classification of Diseases, it's not a mental health disorder in the dsm 4 and I think a lot of people kind of look for it to be in there, but it's not in there. Here are the different diagnoses that you can get under fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. You have fetal alcohol syndrome, that's the full blown. You have fetal alcohol uh, related birth defects, alcohol related neurological disorders, and partial FAS. And then there was the term <coughs> fetal alcohol effect, but they don't use that anymore because it was too broad and they really now can classify it in one of those four categories. So I've tried to provide you with, and we're going to talk about these later, but some, screen, some short screening tools that are available out there that, of course, these tools are not diagnostic. You can't use them and make the diagnosis, but they are good at identifying individuals that maybe need to be referred on to be diagnosed by a uh, doctor. So just so you don't really um, use those and then say, well, this person has fetal alcohol syndrome because the screening tool has a 20 on it. Um, and then this is another issue, and right now they're working on this, but there's actually four different uh, diagnostic tools that they can use to make this diagnosis. The four-digit code is the most common one. We actually have a diagnostic team here in San Antonio. We're really fortunate. And they are actually located at the UT Health Science uh, Krista Santa Rosa Children's Hospital. It's the Center for Hope. How many have heard of that before? It used to be the Center for Miracles, and then I think they changed their name. But Dr. Tran, Helen Tran, is on the state task force also, and Susan Homan. And they um, have been, we, the Texas Department of Developmental Disabilities actually sent them to get trained on using the, the four-digit code diagnostic criteria. So what they do is they have a fetal alcohol uh, diagnosis 
clinic one time a month. If you, and they, what they do is they have a team of individuals trained in making this diagnosis, a pediatrician, a neurologist, a psychologist, and they look at the individual all day long, do the testing, and at the end they can give you a diagnosis of whether or not this individual is uh, FA, fetal alcohol spectrum disorder, some one of the diagnoses, okay? So I encourage you to use them. Um, and also, they would be able to, if you are a physician and you are interested in getting trained and being able to make this diagnosis, they would be able to direct you in the right direction to get this training. Fetal alcohol is 100% preventable. And this was totally shocking to me. It is the leading known cause of preventable mental retardation. Isn't that something? And I think um, people really seem to think fetal alcohol is this obscure thing that once in a great while they might see somebody, oh, that kid doesn't look quite right. Okay? And, and these, these children often get misdiagnosed with other types of birth defects, such as Down syndrome, because their facial features is one of the criteria and it's similar and it looks somewhat like the down feature criteria. So um, it's, not, it's not caused by the father's use of alcohol during pregnancy because he's not pregnant. But we know 80% of substance abusing females live with a substance abuser. So it's really important if you're working with a woman that's drinking alcohol during pregnancy, there's a pretty good chance there's a male involved in her life who's also drinking or using, and that you really need to address that because she's going to be probably unable to stay clean and sober if he is not also addressing his substance abuse at the same time. Um, and I already talked about this not being a new issue. All alcoholic beverages are harmful. It doesn't matter if it's beer, wine, hard liquor, Odules. How many have the non-alcoholic beer? The non-alcoholic beer actually has alcohol, by the way, if you didn't know that. Less than 5.5% or something like that. So, um, and they, they know now that binge drinking is especially harmful because Remember, the baby is getting the alcohol ounce for ounce directly into their bloodstream of what the mother's drinking. So if you, and, and depending on what stage of fetal development the binge drinking is occurring is going to kind of say what kind of uh, issues you're going to be dealing with. Most of the... Uh, Dysmorphic features and the physical birth defects come in the first trimester because that's when those issues are really going on. And we're going to look at that in a minute. Uh, but later on, as the brain is forming, if you're binge drinking in that period, then you see more of the neurological and the behavioral deficits with these kids. Okay, Alcohol is alcohol, and there's no safe amount. And so here... Four or more drinks in one setting for a female and five for a male is actually considered binge drinking. Now, I go to HEB and stop and go all the time, and I'm standing in line at 5 o'clock at quitting time, and I see people walking out with cases of beer that I know they're going home and drinking in one setting in one evening. And in fact, how many of you know people that start drinking Friday when they get off work? I see some of you smiling, right? And they start putting the beers away. Well, I earned it. They're functional alcoholics. Well, there's plenty of women like that, okay? And although in our culture it's less acceptable for women to abuse alcohol, they're just better at keeping it secret and minimizing how much they're using because there's a lot more shame involved in a woman. And, and then the other thing is, I hear people talk about wanting to make alcohol and drug use during pregnancy illegal. Well, let's put her in jail and make her quit if she can't. But remember, what we want to do is we want to get women 
to come forward and ask for help. And I can tell you that other than being a pedophile, being a substance abusing pregnant woman is like one of the absolutely most shameful, awful things that you can ever experience. Because people look at you and they're just like, what is wrong with you? You know, they just don't understand. So when this woman is coming into any kind of treatment program, people don't need to shame her. She already feels that. Instinctively, she knows, even though on the outside she's not saying it, she knows it's not okay. She just can't quit on her own. So we know 12 ounces of beer and 5 ounces of wine and 1.5 ounces of hard liquor all have exactly the same amount of alcohol. So that shot of tequila has the same amount of alcohol as a beer. Or maybe I should do it the other way. That beer is equal to a shot of tequila. And then here's another comparison of sizes, and size does matter. It's just basically what we just talked about. But remember, when you're talking to your clients and you're asking them, well, how much did you drink? And they say, oh, I had one drink a night. Well, look, you need to ask them, okay, how big was the glass? What kind of drink? Was it a 40 ounce? Was it, was it malt liquor? Oh, you had a glass of wine. How big was your glass, right? Was it a tall boy beer, right? And we don't think about that, do we? Also, you want to check the labels on things that, that pregnant women are drinking that you may not even know have alcohol in them. Okay, we're going to talk about the brain. Um, it causes brain damage, and it lasts forever. Now, although the brain is very resilient, it is going to be, a, the individuals with fetal alcohol spectrum disorders can improve greatly. There is a lot of cognitive behavioral and behavioral training that can be done to help with functioning. And the brain is just a great organ. You guys have seen those pictures of people born with half a brain, that their brain like rewires and the other side does all the stuff. So, Although they are going to have that disability, they can improve and do better if they get the right treatment. So um, let me show you this picture. And I actually met this doctor last summer, Dr. Claren, at a FASD conference. And he told me he hates this picture when people show it because it was taken in the 80s and he what it does is it leads people to believe two things. One, that everybody with fetal alcohol has this, and this is not true. This is an extreme, and of course, these babies are dead because these are real brains, and they would not be taking pictures of them if they were alive, right? And the other thing is it does is it, it leads people to believe that you have to have this going on or it's not severe, okay? And that's not necessarily true either. But this is an extreme example of what can happen if you drink during pregnancy. And then this is more like what you're going to see um, with the neurological problems. The part of the brain that's being highlighted there is the corpus callosum, and what you see in fetal alcohol, A is, um, that's a normal brain. B is a 12-year-old. You see the thinning of it. And C has total absence of that part of the brain. And that's a problem because these issues with this part of the brain are connected to uh, intellectual functioning, reading, learning, memory, executive functioning, deficits in attention, so, you know, children that are maybe not full-blown fetal alcohol syndrome, but may be exposed, may present attention deficit and also have the fetal alcohol effects going on and the attention deficit or oppositional defiant disorders. 
get diagnosed, but there's this constant frustration in the families and the treatment providers, well, why isn't this person responding? Why aren't they getting better? Because these are actual, these are birth defects. These are not things that are going to all of a sudden come back and get better with therapy. Now, there's things you can do to help them do better, but their brain has been damaged. And here's another picture of that. Um, there's a total absence there of the whole, that large dark area in the back of that brain there. It's totally empty. Isn't that something? And we don't know exactly how many individuals are born with FASD disorders, but we think roughly in the general population per thousand births, it's probably like 0.5. Um, the CDC has some stats that say between two, 0.5 and 2 children per every thousand are born with fetal alcohol spectrum disorders. But this is very interesting. Of course, you're going to see more, higher amounts of it in populations where you see higher substance abuse going on. And what's one of those populations? Foster care, right? CPS, we know, this is Judge Sakai who says 75% of the parents involved in his CPS courts are there because of alcohol and drug-related issues. So um, this study was done, and I thought this was interesting. They found um, really high, 10 to 15 kids per thousand in the foster care system are, could be diagnosed with a fetal alcohol spectrum disorders. Actually, they went as far, this is fetal alcohol syndrome, which is the full-blown uh, having all four, uh, met all four of the criteria. So if you're working with kids in the Child Protective Sur Service System, there's really a higher likelihood that those kids may have these issues going on. 